en todo momento que sea el pueblo quien defienda su revolución y que sus instituciones armadas sean leales a esta. La revolución cubana es heredera de las tradiciones independentistas. Una de las tareas más importantes que se llevaron a cabo desde el triunfo revolucionario fue la campaña de alfabetización y eso fue un elemento muy importante eh, para eh, concientizar a la población cubana analfabeta en, aquel, en, aquel, en aquellos años. Porque, como dice un viejo proverbio, el conocimiento es poder. Y como dijera nuestro héroe nacional José Martí, ser cultos es el único modo de ser libres. Otro elemento fundamental eh, es la historia, la continuidad del proceso independentista. No olvidar por ningún concepto la historia, el tributo a nuestros mártires, eh, a nuestro proceso revolucionario, el humanismo, la solidaridad con las causas justas del mundo, la concientización del momento histórico y no por último, el menos importante, la unidad. Fidel expresó en una ocasión, mientras existe el imperialismo, el partido, el Estado y el pueblo, les prestarán a los servicios de la defensa la máxima atención. La Guardia Revolucionaria no se descuidará jamás. La historia enseña con demasiada elocuencia que los que olvidan este principio no sobreviven al error. Con todo esto, entendemos que hay una ideología de la Revolución Cubana, una que articula el pensamiento de José Martí, nuestro héroe nacional, eh, que articula también el pensamiento de Marx, Marx, de Lenin y Fidel. Es preciso señalar que en la Cuba de hoy, eh, realmente el gobierno de los Estados Unidos despliega una intensa guerra por la hegemonía eh, cultural. A veces emplea los recursos que le son propios para su reproducción ideológica y a veces también construye otros y para ellos se apropia del lenguaje de la izquierda. Esto es importante que lo conozcamos porque eh, con vistas a lograr su objetivo están eh, utilizando nuestros propios eh, elementos y es importante estar preparados, es importante eh, analizar, es importante debatir, eh, es importante estar preparados para enfrentar los diferentes avatares que, que debemos enfrentar en esta lucha ideológica que se está llevando a cabo hoy en todos los espacios. Un requisito es indispensable para los objetivos de esa hegemonía eh, cultural y es el de desideologizar, o sea, reideologizar, pero en un sentido inverso, sería de la izquierda hacia la derecha. Pero con estas nuevas formas de, de intentos por socavar eh, nuestra ideología, y por cambiar las mentalidades, podríamos hacernos la pregunta de que si acaso es, es que eso significa que se abandonarían los más elementales principios del marxismo, del leninismo, que puede, por supuesto, perfeccionar el socialismo. Realmente eh, la situación de Cuba en el contexto es peculiar. Desde 60 años de una revolución victoriosa, la batalla que se libra es en el terreno ideológico. Los medios transnacionales intentan desarticular el consenso conseguido, que es el pilar de la unidad ideológica de la revolución. No eh, abandonaremos ninguno de los principios, tanto del marxismo como del leninismo, como eh, las ideas de nuestro héroe nacional José Martí, y mucho menos eh, la visión y la guía histórica que tenemos, que nos legó el comandante jefe Fidel Castro Ruz. Yo les hablaba del tema de Cuba porque un poco sirve para eh, visualizar ¿no? las interrogantes que, que nos estaban realizando en cuanto a las masas, la autodeterminación, la unidad, la necesidad de, de un mando único del partido, eh, de esa unidad ideológica que es importante para eh, realmente alcanzar los objetivos que, tener, que nos trazamos ante un mundo 
cada vez más dividido, cada vez más hegemónico, donde el capitalismo se erige como el sistema predominante. A una interrogante de cómo enfrentar los desafíos y el reto de sobrevivir y avanzar en medio de la crisis económica, social, política y ambiental que sufre el mundo. Quiero responderles que el sistema imperialista que hoy impera ha arribado a un orden económico global neoliberal despiadadamente irracional e injusto que es insostenible. Esa evolución ha traído consigo las llamadas sociedades de consumo y su tendencia a despilfarradores e irresponsables. Ellas envenenan las mentes de un gran número de personas en el mundo que en medio de una ignorancia política y económica generalizada son manipuladas por la publicidad a través de los medios masivos. Y para terminar, quiero compartirles esto y quiero resumirlo así. A la globalización no liberal y egoísta, al antidemocrático orden político y económico internacional, debemos responder con la unidad y la globalización de la solidaridad, la concientización y la promoción del diálogo, la integración y la cooperación, utilizando también los recursos que utilizan como la tecnología y las redes sociales. Queridos hermanos, muchas gracias por darme la oportunidad nuevamente. La lucha continúa. Hasta la victoria siempre. All right. Thank you so much, Jaime Rodriguez Flores, for such powerful and motivating statements. We appreciate it. Our next speaker, Ochivera Olunga, is a member of the Revolutionary Socialist League in Kenya. The Revolutionary Socialist League is a socialist revolutionary vanguard movement committed to a revolution. Their activities aim to recruit the masses to um, achieve the Revolutionary Socialist League is a Marxist-Leninist organization committed to the complete overhaul of the current exploitative capitalist system and its replacement by socialism. So please help me in welcoming Achivera Olunga. Achivera. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Can you hear me? Muito obrigado, camaradas. Consegue me ouvir? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Comrade Ochivera Olunga. I am a Pan African revolutionary activist and organizer here in Kenya and also a member of the Central Committee of the Revolutionary Socialist League. As fellow Comrade Sister has said, uh, Revolutionary Socialist League. Is a revolutionary organization based in Kenya that is uh, struggling towards achieving a socialist society during our lifetime, uh, both economic and political socialism in our lifetime. So, as, as RSL, we have been uh, committed trying to build a revolutionary vanguard in Kenya. And uh, through different organizing and agitati agitation uh, forums, we've been able to create uh, cadres who are grounded in the socialist ideals and with the solidarity support of the All African Revolutionary People's Party uh, under the support of Comrade uh, Sobukwe Shukura, who is based in Kenya, we've been able to reach out to different uh, revolutionary comrades and brothers and sisters across the continent and across the world. So this day, uh, the All African, the African Liberation Day is a special day that we as uh, RSL, uh, we hold dear to our hearts and also in our minds. Uh, we've been uh, organizing it uh, for so long. Uh, different years and even this year we shall be able to organize it on the Tuesday the 25th. So just to contribute on what what do we do what do we need uh, to do now to to to, to channel the, 
of Africa. We understand the different ideas, the different ideas and uh, Okay, thank you. So, we as the Revolutionary Socialist League, we believe that uh, the Pan African, the Pan African revolutionary of the 21st century, is grounded in the international socialist ideals because we hold dear that for every person. For us in the international struggle, for us to defeat uh, capitalism, imperialism, and uh, neocolonialism that has uh, been the greatest challenges in our 21st century, we believe that the need for international solidarity becomes important. And, and in resonating with uh, this year's theme of uh, forward ever to World World Pan African uh, unity, it becomes important for us. Uh, to intensify the call for un unifying uh, different progressive forces across the world and more so in Africa. Hay una uh, llamada para unir las voces progresivas. By geographical locations that the imperialist and the colonial power uh, came and defined us by based on borderline. Uh, because as uh, Brother Malcolm X used to say, we still belong, we are blood brothers with the uh, people in Venezuela, Cuba and Haiti. So our call for the unity of all the progressive movements has always been key because we believe for us to build a better African uh, solidarity in the revolutionary and socialist way, we believe that uh, the unity of all the different progressive forces in the world that are fighting against uh, the evil hands of colonial uh, imperial powers, neocolonialists, and also neoliberals is very fundamental in our daily in our daily struggle uh, as we strive to as we strive to seek a better society so how do we how do we unite or how do we galvanize our different socialist movements first uh, we understand that unity is paramount but then the unity that we call for is the unity of the uh, is a class unity, is a unity of the oppressed classes of the world. We do not call for the unity of the bourgeois African, uh, African leaders or the unity of uh, a liberal or the unity of uh, the neocolonial puppets in Africa. We call for the unity of the oppressed classes in Africa. These are the classes that have been done, that downgraded. These are the people who societies and system after system tries to dehumanize them. We, we see how different Africans are trying to, are suffering during this wave of COVID-19. And uh, we, we understand that when we talk about unity of the African people, we believe that that unity must first be, param must first be a class unity because our struggle towards a socialist society is based on class. We do not call for the unity of the puppets in Africa. We, we can't be able to uh, unite with such forces. So for us to build a better, as we're struggle, uh, struggling towards building a, a Pan-African uh, socialist, uh, Pan-African society, we believe that the African people needs to be much connected we, we believe that, uh, and we strive to try to decolonize the minds of our people because it's very important in trying to understand how uh, neocolonialism during this time is, is working. So as Africans, we believe that first by uniting by different uh, revolutionary or progressive movements, not only in Africa, but across the world, those movements that are fighting in West Papua, trying to fight, seek the independence against the uh, liberal Indonesian government. Our brothers and sisters that are trying to fight for the independence in uh, Western Sahara. Our brothers and sisters who are also trying to fight for the existence in Palestine. Anyway, we believe that that unity 
is paramount. Another way that I think we need to, to do now is in to intensify the solidarity. And uh, solidarity, as uh, Comrade Samora Michelle used to say, is not only based on material uh, support. We believe that solidarity, we can uh, echo, echo our solidarity within the African continent and internationally by trying to, by trying to recognize and uh, by trying to recognize and uh, appreciate the different people that are trying to fight for these forces. Our solidarity that we believe in is solidarity that is anchored first on, uh, on ideals, because uh, if we belong to the same uh, socialist idea, uh, ideology that we seek to overhaul the exploitation of man by man in our society, then it becomes important for us to unite uh, ideology, ideologically, with different forces struggling also to seek the same, the same goal. So our solidarity must not always, uh, with the situations as it can also be through different other platforms, recognizing other people's struggle, struggles and trying also to connect with our different uh, Africans, both at, in African continent and those outside African continent. Another way, for example, that I believe we need to do to, to, to galvanize or to build a better socialist movement in Africa is also to identify uh, a Pan-African, uh, identify with a Pan-African language. And we believe that uh, a Pan-African, the Pan-Africanism of this century is revolutionary Pan-Africanism. So it does not, it does not uh, deter people from associating with it, whether they are in Latin America or South America or even in uh, Asia. We believe that this is something that as long as uh, we have individuals who recognize uh, the different steps that are being taken by Africa, individuals who recognize the need uh, for this, for this unity, because now we understand that uh, neo neocolonialism has taken its root in our continent, and a lot of a lot of exploitation and uh, plundering of the resources continues. A lot of uh, oppression of the people, and more so, a lot of uh, dehumanizing and uh, suppression of uh, the African people, more so women, has been uh, manifested to the fullest uh, form. So we believe that such, such tendencies must, must not only be called against, but must be fought against by every, uh, by every progressive and every African-loving individual. Because as uh, we continue the call that uh, Babak uh, Nkrumah uh, believed in, in trying to build a a stronger political party within the African continent, revolutionary party, and also a military wing that will be able to be, a, be able to, to defend the territorial boundaries of our continent. So we as the Revolutionary Socialist League, we try through our different uh, uh, revolutionary study cells and political educations to agitate to our comrades back here in Kenya on the need for the Pan-African unity. Because the unity through organizing is we be, through organizing, revolutionary organizing is, is, uh, is very easy and uh, very, very possible for our people to identify themselves with other oppressed people uh, on the African continent. So as we move forward uh, with the Pan-African uh, identity. It's become important for us also to, to echo the words of those who came before us and also to believe in, in a goal that they were calling for, because we believe the time for the time for the neoliberal and uh, neoliberalism and the time for the imperial puppets in Africa uh, must now come to an end because uh, is high time our people, our people as they continue to struggle is high time our people get get uh, 
exposed against such such malicious uh, tendencies of the imperial power. So the call for the Pan-African unity must always be stronger because must always be stronger than it was ever because in the 21st century we have a new wave of uh, new wave of oppressors. And they're not only oppressors in different schemes, but they're also oppressors in our own schemes who are continuing that exploitation of our African continent and our resources. So the call for the Pan-African unity uh, must be stronger, and we support all the uh, people across the world, more so in Africa, trying to fight and uh, seek their own independence and freedom from such oppressors. And uh, that call must always be intensified at both the local and the international uh, level, because we, in our continent, we have organizations, uh, imperial organizations, that still seek to support the interest of the mother colonies. Uh, for example, we see how the French French government is trying to organize the African. Uh, organizing a conference, trying to deal on the way, trying to discuss African identities, and you find it being hosted by France, so you ask yourself, uh, what business do France have to conduct a conference dealing with African issues? Since when did countries like France join the African continent to try and discuss our own issues? Of course, we don't only believe that uh, we are capable of handling our own African issues, but for us to handle African issues, we must first deal with the internal uh, contradictions. And those are the neocolonial puppets and the African uh, elites who try to strive and have a colonial mentality, trying to take our people uh, to the colonial ways. So such things, we believe, must be resisted. And uh, a lot of agitation must continue to be uh, preached across the African continent. because. As, uh, as time goes by, our people continue through the plundering of the African resources, through the suppression of the African people. Our people continue to suffer, and we believe that it is only through a Pan-African identity and call that we can unite and that we can seek an alternative way. And I think this alternative way since the 1960s had already been set forward by our forefathers, Kwame Nkrumah and Sekou Toure and the likes. And the call for African uh, identity party, army, and even uh, an African economic model that can uh, that obeys the laws of scientific socialism, because it is only through these uh, socialist ideal ideas that we can be able to unite with every oppressed person in the world. With it, uh, because through it we under, we are able to understand that. Uh, an injustice to any person still remains an injustice to us all. So that's that's my take on how we can uh, build a stronger Pan-African movement. And the call must always uh, remain stronger because uh, there can never be a truly liberated Africa as long as we still have parts of Africa still occupied by white minority, minority rules, as long as we still have parts of Africa uh, being uh, being led by colonial puppets and uh, right-wing terrorists like we have in Kenya. So the call for the Pan-African unity, we believe, must now be intensified now. And the younger generation of the African people, both at the African continent and abroad, must now join hands in solidarity as we strive now to, to echo the Pan-African language. Because it is only through the liberation of the African continent that all the oppressed peoples of the world may find freedom and liber liberation. Because Africa remains the motherland of all, and the liber liberation of Africa will always be the death to the imperial powers, the death to new colonialism, and the death to the fascist tendencies that have been rising. So from our comrades back in Kenya, we salute all the revolutionaries fighting towards that progress, and we say we we salute all progressive forces across the world and more so in Africa. And we say that we shall always be in solidarity as time goes by for the liberation of Africa depends on her children. Long live Africa, long live Pan-Africanism. Forward.
with the revolutionary pan african pan africanism thank you comrades as che, as che guevara used to say hasta la victoria siempre Should I introduce the culture presentation at this time? The Fulani twins of Sierra Leone, born in the Kano district, Eastern province of Sierra Leone, they started performing at the early age of 12. Their groove is a combination of Afro beats, hip hop and reggae and African vibes. Let's welcome Fulani twins of Sierra Leone with Green Mouth. It's a small country on the west coast of Africa, but in recent years, Sierra Leone has made great strides toward growing its economy and attracting foreign investment. Still, millions continue to live in poverty, and nowhere is that more evident than on the streets of the capital, where thousands of children toil each yeah. day just to make enough money. Walking upon this Green Mile. Salon style, baby. I'm from the city of the Blood Diamond, Kono, where I was born. I'm a dude. Wake up and leave. Get what is yours. Follow your dreams. Hatch like you know. Bark like a duck. Ooh. Howl like a wolf. Woo! I'm a true soldier. I'm a soul rebel. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This what we do in Pandas Green Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pandas Green Man. Hey, salute Natalia. Salute me flag. Green, white, and blue. We coat of hands. Two lines on the side. Unity, freedom, no justice. no justice, no justice for the poor, no free education. Me, you, myself, black man, so in a lot, yes, in a lot. Knowledge and truth, not true. Wisdom is quiet, might me, miss alone. Uh -huh. Me, sweet, sweet, free town. My motherland, the anthems of Africa. Way, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm walking ten toes, but this green my love. Yeah, 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 yeah. I walk at ten toes, but this green my love. If life is a thing, uh, money could buy, rich could I live, and poor man could die. So my dead, so my dead, so my dead. Ebola come, Ebola Kill me people now uh -huh. Ten, Ten years, years of war. war Still no changes No changes The government sit down uh -huh. Making me people suffer now suffer. What we gonna do? What we gonna say? What we gonna say? Uh -huh. The foundation we're building For the youth, my people and I'm for children Yeah, 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 yeah. With the walk at and top on this green my yeah, 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 I don't place for you. Place for government, classy. Mm -hmm. Governor classy, no sweat. They don't sweat. The one they with the poor, we country. The country. The one they with the poor, we country. Yo, you know. Find this green man now. Yeah. He don't tell. He don't tell. We don't tire. Yeah. Like Emma said, the sun hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We still live and suffer, but this green my love. Yeah, 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 yeah. We don't say I'm for suffer, but this green my love. Eh, eh. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. We don't say I'm for suffer, but this green my love.
don't tell for supper, but it's been my way. Yeah, 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 yeah,
because even we have a ruling state, uh, the political dynamics of our country are either ethnic based or most of them are uh, liberal or the center right uh, or the capitalist uh, parties. So our people, our people still view challenges like uh, the divisions between the ethnic eth ethnicity as uh, major challenges. They 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 really don't understand uh, that the system is actually uh, the major enemy here. The call for socialism in our country. We had forces uh, in the 80s who were socialist leaning and who are trying to bring better society. So I can say there's a lot of disparity between the Kenyan, uh, the Kenyan citizen and the state. The relationship between the state, uh, state is being viewed as a higher supreme power and any person who joined the ruling class is seen as a kind of a savior. But then he or she comes, uh, comes from a different ethnic based political party that uh, has its deep cause in the capitalist uh, model. And I think it's a bigger problem. And so as the young generation of this country, we are trying to awaken our people and trying now to develop a different political uh, philosophy and a political ideal, because we believe that the system uh, that our uh, founding leaders inherited from the British colonialist uh, was anchored deeply in the capitalistic uh, model of production and as such, it does not give uh, any respect whatsoever to the common citizen. And it's a challenge that we try now to address because as a vanguard, we try to agitate to people. We try to expose uh, such, such tendencies by the state uh, because uh, we have two classes and that they may unite as a different uh, ethnic lords from their different uh, ethnic based or so-called tribe in, uh, in our country. So they need now to organize people based first on class analysis of our situation is important. And uh, secondly, based on uh, the people's ability and the people's power as they're being entrenched in the Bujo constitution of sovereignty lying with them. So it's something that we try to, to change. So uh, basically there's no, there's a lot of, uh, a disparity between the Kenyan citizen and the state. The state is either viewed as a supreme power in some lot with its uh, representatives and the people, uh, the government has made sure that even uh, such social ideals and uh, a different society system that people can strive towards in towards to has been, uh, the links has been cut. So that's what we try to do. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And um, there was another follow-up question with that. I guess then with that, how is then the relationship? Uh, are there problems between um, the Kenyan between the Kenyan people and the police and military as well? Uh, the the relationship between the police. I believe that uh, the police service as a a key structure of the state in Kenya. Uh, was structurized in the colonial mentality. A police officer in Kenya, for example, uh, will fight to protect to protect uh, the property of the ruling class. And in many cases, even during since the wake of the COVID-19 uh, started last year, we saw a lot of people being casualties of police brutality in our country. So the people, the relationship between the police service and the people, of course, is poor because in many cases, the police uh, service in our country has proven uh, to be anti-people. Many cases, you find people trying to gather in peaceful ways as the uh, constitution wants them to, to try to agitate for their different uh, or represent their different uh, cases. But we see, we have seen cases where innocent and armed citizens have been clobbered. So even the relationship, how the police officer treats people in our country, and these are people in black skins as us, is no different like the police in, uh, for example, in the States of how we watch how they mistreat other people of color, and also maybe people from the lower 
the lower classes among the white races. So our police officers, there's no love between our police officers and the citizens. Uh, in case there may be a few elements in the police service, of course, we will always try to say that uh, uh, these individuals who are bad. But we have a, a system that uh, is deeply anchored in uh, protection of right, uh, property, uh, protection of property of the ruling class. It does not give any respect whatsoever to the common citizen. So it's also, some, it's also a system that we strive to expose and we call for its abolishment or uh, replacement by a better uh, police service that has the interest of the citizens at heart and that also does not protect uh, few crooks in the name of political uh, leaders in the country. Oh, okay, um, thank you so much. And we would like to um, just ask one more general question that came in, if we may ask. Uh, a person asked, is abolition an aspect of socialism? If uh, maybe you could have a few words. Um, that... uh, we believe, for example, the abolishment of the uh, neocolonial police state as a, as, a, as a social way of trying to transform our society into a better and more uh, collaborative and a better system for our people. Because uh, we believe that uh, such, such structures that were inherited, uh, for example, when you talk about the issue like the police service, even the military in our country, all our military in, in, in terms of barrack naming is still based on the British uh, uh, aspects. You'll find uh, military barracks being named the way they, they're never be, they're, they were like never renamed. They're still with the colonial uh, naming. And also the structures and the, the power structure of the police service and all that military is from that uh, colonial mentality. So for us, abolish, abolishing the structure, the police structure that gives or protect uh, the ruling capitalist class against the ordinary citizens uh, becomes paramount because uh, we don't want to replace it with a, we don't want to replace it with a liberal a liberal face or a liberal uh, structure. We want to abolish it entirely because the main core that protects it is, this, is still the core that used to protect the colonial police force and is what the system uh, finds pleasure because their main interest is to protect the property of this ruling class. They don't give any respect to the citizens. And I believe that a better police uh, service can be established, uh, one that caters uh, is a pro-people service. And that is, I think, is something that can be achievable first as we try to uh, overhaul and uh, overthrow the capitalist society that exists in our country. So I believe that uh, once uh, we overthrow the capitalist society in Kenya and anywhere in Africa, uh, it becomes easier to abolish the system, uh, the police system that protects uh, the power and the interest of the ruling class. So we believe that such an abolishment will fall within the socialist ideas that we strive to that we struggle to establish and also to to fight and live by yeah excellent yeah thank you so much for that clarification um we also have actually another question that came in um it um the person asked do we see methods like general strikes the best way to make people's demands at large to be recognized Do we see? Can you repeat the question? Yes, I can. So the person asked, uh, do we see methods like the general strikes or strikes as the best way to make people's demand at large be recognized? So like um, going on strikes and stuff, is that a good way to um, for them to see the demands of people to be recognized? Yeah, in, uh, we believe that general strikes are good for people to represent their issues. But our major problem has always been who are the main instigators of such general strikes. 
in many cases you'll find that uh, is the deep state or the existing states trying to divert the aim of the people. We believe in a general strike uh, that is class consciousness, a general strike that has no barriers, uh, whether depending on people's uh, way of worship or uh, people's uh, people's uh, ethnic uh, backgrounds. A general strike, as long as is a is a is a pro people, is a is a people led general strike. For example, we can say that. Uh, we have tea farmers in our country, and we know that most of these uh, tea farms, 99% of them are still owned by foreign, uh, foreigners, more so mostly British, and also a few elements in the Kenyan ruling class. Where once we have such farmers now uh, striking for their rights and, for example, for the wages to be increased or for their better working conditions to be better, we believe that if the duty of every uh, revolutionary to join in such strike. But we believe that such strike should also be instigated towards uh, capturing power or by these uh, people, because the, the problem uh, at, the lower, at the lower level may be exercised by the common, common citizen, but then we have a bigger problem. So all the strike, we try to tie them with the political situation. Because the political problem is the core, is the key root for all of our problem. So we support strikes that try to expose uh, the in in effect ineffectiveness uh, of the system. We support general strike that are geared towards uh, empowering, uh, not even empowering, that are geared towards uh, seeking liberation for the different people uh, engaging in it. Because if we do not give it a political uh, dimension, you'll find that most of these strikes, they end up as uh, liberal, liberal uh, guided uh, strikes where we have a few people who may be paid by the same system to come and uh, water down the, the, true, the true efforts being put into place by the working class. So the strike by the working class, we believe it must have a political direction. And that political direction, it must be geared towards uh, the same people striking for a better uh, and a humane society and system uh, being being joined hand in hand by different uh, proletariat and different members of the working class. Because if that is not uh, done, then uh, the strike will still be uh, a chess game where we have uh, those who dictate the rules of the strike uh, being in play and dictating to the same people who are striking. Okay, wow, well, yeah, excellent. Um, thank you so much. We actually have more questions coming in, if that's okay. So we do have a few minutes left of this Q&A. So we'll, um, i like to first, a statement was written, read a statement uh, from one of our participants. Uh, they said, a young people need to be educated about what is happening around African and they should know, uh, know about African history training class, organizing revolutionary training to young people to build um, to build them and create uh, self-aware. For example, um, what's in Nigeria, we always, um, the sister wrote that in Nigeria, always organize a retreat every month for their member and member in order to build them and help awaken the self-consciousness. So thank you very much for that statement. I, I think that is one of really great ways to do that. So um, another question that came in is, um, is nationalism the enemy of pan-Africanism? Uh, yes, uh, in us, in us, uh, an extent we believe that uh, is a vehicle uh, by the African elite, because as I said earlier, we believe that the African of the 21st century need to be a revolutionary Pan-African. Being revolutionary, it means that uh, first you recognize that you being an African, you are also, there are also people being oppressed like you across the world because the struggle has always been international. So we believe that nationalism uh, in this century, it becomes a very liberal context 
because we may have nationalists within the country that may not necessarily be progressive or that may necessarily not be revolutionary. We may have nationalists, for example, with different interests in the economic system. We have people who own, for example, the media, private media, they'll privatize that media station, they'll privatize the water sector, they'll privatize, let's even say, the electricity. But then, when we have a foreign power to say that, uh, they'll try to rally citizens that, oh, we, for example, they'll say we are, uh, we are Kenyans. So we, we cannot accept any company that is uh, not owned by Kenyan. The, the idea may look so sweet uh, on, the, on the face value for the ordinary citizen who will say, like in our country, we have uh, these uh, liberal tendency that they say, buy Kenya, build Kenya. It, uh, it really shows you that this is not the way forward because these are, uh, in uh, our own context, we can call them uh, bourgeoisie or a uh, few people who have acquired a little wealth by uh, privatizing uh, the means of production or survival for the common citizen. Now trying to find pleasure in uniting the same oppressed citizen to come and take an identity or a national stand with him or her. So we call such a concept, uh, a bourgeois concept and uh, a very reactionary concept. Africa today, we need a revolutionary Pan-African. A revolutionary Pan-African, we believe that if there's a bourgeois, uh, if there's an oppressor in Tanzania, wherever, whether he or she goes to Cameroon, he'll still be able to oppress those people. So there's no need an oppressed, an oppressed uh, South African can unite with an, oppress, an oppressor in Niger in the name of nationalism in our African context. The Pan-African... A revolutionary. It it makes us to unite uh, with the self, uh, with a class consciousness. It tells us that uh, an oppressed, uh, an oppressed farmer in Madagascar is 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 a uh, is a class is a class ally, is a class brother or sister with an oppressed uh, student activist in Sierra Leone. So our call is for Pan African. Uh, revolutionary pan-Africanism. We don't support any form of nationalism because it has proven to be the interest of uh, elites in Africa who try to, to reach the same certain uh, economic status as the as what Karl Marx called the, the bourgeoisie in Europe and also in America. So we believe we revolutionary pan-Africanism. We don't need to call for nationalism because it is only through pan-Africanism in a revolutionary way that we divide the colonial borderland Kenyan and so and so is an Ethiopian. An oppressed Ethiopian still remains the same as an oppressed Angolan. So we believe in revolutionary pan-Africanism and we try to tell our people and uh, deconstruct the theories of nationalism as they exist today. All right. Thank you so much, Brother, um, for these questions. Um, we do want to um, we do want to uh, tell everyone just a reminder that uh, the Cubans, those who are in Cuba, could not participate in the Q and A because of the pl uh, blockade. So we do want to um, remind everyone of that as well as send our solidarity to the Cuban uh, pe the, to the people in Cuba. So we like to thank everyone for in our first panel. We had some great. Uh, we learned a lot. We thank you all. We do apologize for the technical difficulties. That we um, we had, and we would like to now move on to our next um, part of the um, part of the event. Thank you. Thank you so much, comrades, uh, brothers, you. sisters. The struggle must continue. Africa, we say Africa Moja, Africa Huru, meaning one Africa, uh, a free Africa. So the call must continue. And as comrade brother Malcolm X used to say, by any means necessary, we must liberate our continent and our people. Thank you. I believe we're ready for our next culture presentation. And that's gonna be the Pop Birds Reggae Band. They're based here in Maryland. 
and they're international. Everybody here loves them. It's a roots reggae band known for performing music with strong lyrical content and musical expressions to uplift the Rasta Liberty communities. The band specializes in performing socially conscious music that they endeavor to promote ancient wisdom through the art of music, thereby spreading the spiritual message of John Rastafari. Let's give it up for the Pawbirds Reggae Band. <laughs> That is gonna degrade our women. No, no. It's not a music that is gonna refer to ourselves as dogs. No, sir. It's not a music that is gonna refer to our sisters as you know, hoes and all these other names. I don't even wanna call them. No, you can't. 
can't do it. You know what I mean? Because I'm ashamed of some of the things that I hear sometimes that we listen to. But today, right now, I'm telling you. Some say because of their behavior, they see themselves as the new black. I'm the old black. Give it up for the Powerbirds Reggae Band. Where would we be without our culture? Positive music, positive vibes. Powerbirds Reggae Band, led by Sia Spencer. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going on to our next panel. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. I'm going to move on to our next uh, panel, panel, and uh, I will sister Tandy Way will be a uh, facility section, so I'll pass it on to her. Warmest revolutionary greetings, brothers and sisters. My name is Sister Tandy Way, and I am a proud organizer for the All African People's Revolutionary Party. I have been organizing for the liberation of our motherland, Africa, for 33 years, and I'm also a lawyer and proud mother of two sons. I want to officially welcome each and every one of you to this historic Pan -Afri sorry, African Liberation Day. Now, we have a number of brilliant and inspirational uh, speakers lined up for you. But before I introduce the speakers, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the history of the All African People's Revolutionary Party and African Liberation Day. We commemorate African Liberation Day because Africa and African people all over the world are, are not free. When you look at the conditions of the masses of our people, whether they're on the continent or in the diaspora, we suffer from economic exploitation, ideological confusion, and we are largely disorganized. So African Liberation Day is a reminder to our people that we are not yet liberated. And so we have an individual and collective responsibility to fight for the liberation of our people. The theme for African Liberation Day this year is forward to worldwide Pan-African unity. Forward to worldwide Pan-African unity. This commemoration is being held over two days. That's May 23rd, 2021, and Tuesday, May the 25th, 2021, which is the official day for Live African Liberation Day. African Liberation Day was originally Africa Freedom Day in uh, 1958 and was changed to African Liberation Day in 1963 to mark the onward progress of African people worldwide and to continue the struggle against capitalism and imperialism. So this year is 
the um, 58th anniversary of African Liberation Day. Now, the All African People's Revolutionary Party was founded in 1968 by great son of Africa, Kwame Nkrumah. And he wrote a manuscript called The Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare, in which he called for the formation of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. The All African People's Revolutionary Party has a women's wing, the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, that was founded on November 27, 1980 in Cincinnati, Ohio. Last year in 2020, we commemorated the 40th anniversary of the AAWRU, which is an indication that African women have an important role in the struggle to achieve Pan-Africanism. The objective of the AAPRP is Pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of Africa under a just collective system called scientific socialism. The ideology of the AAPRP is Nkrumahism to raise and is named after two of Africa's, um, or among two of Africa's greatest leaders, Ahmed Sekuture and Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah, Nkrumahism Terezum, is the ideology of the AAPRP. We have chapters at home in Africa. We have chapters throughout the United States. We have a chapter here in Canada. We have brother-sister organizations all over the Pan-African world. And some of those brother-sister organizations will be represented on the panel that I'm going to introduce shortly. We want to welcome you brothers and sisters to this commemoration. And once again, the theme of African Liberation Day 2021 is forward to worldwide Pan-African unity. Now, at this time, I'm going to introduce um, our first panelist from the American Indian Movement, who is Comrade Carolina Castorino Santana. Comrade Carolina Castorino Santana. However, I want to give you a brief history of the American Indian Movement. In the 30 years of its formal history, the American Indian Movement has given witness to a great many changes. At the core of the movement is Indian leadership under the direction of Negawa, Newaya, Wedun, Clyde H. Bellacourt, and others. The American Indian movement has made steady progress and has transformed policy making into programs and organizations that have served Indian people in many in communities in the United States and other parts of the world. In November 1972, the American Indian movement brought a caravan of native nation representatives to Washington DC to the place where dealings with Indians have taken place since 1849. AIM put forward the following claims directly before the President of the United States. One, the restoration of treaty making. Number two, the establishment of a treaty commission to make new treaties. Number three, Indian leaders to address Congress. Number four, the review of treaty commitments and violations together with other demands um, to further the aims of the American Indian movement. Without further ado, I would like to welcome Comrade Carolina Castorino Santana, who is the Executive Director of the American Indian Center of Indiana. Hello, good day, and thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm having to do this for my car. Um, Dagote, she eat, she eat le Carolina, she eat, she let le payende, she eat checha. Um, buenos tardes, me llamo Carolina, soy Lipan Apache del estado de Texas. Hi, I'm Carolina, I'm Apache from Tex, from Texas. And I am an enrolled citizen of the Lipan Apache tribe of Texas, and I'm from the Sun Otter clan. Um, I tend to do my introduction trilingually uh, in that way because it represents the language path of my grandfather, uh, which was his first language was Apache, his second language was Spanish, and his third language was English. Um, so I've been involved with the American Indian Movement of Indiana and Kentucky, uh, their chapter, um, for almost, um, I would say about eight years now. Um, and so, but I definitely am a third generation AIM representative. My family has been involved in the movement, um, for, for decades, um, you know, ever since its inception in, in some sort of way, whether it was in a supportive capacity or whether it was in a leadership capacity. Um, and then I am also the executive director of the American Indian Center of Indiana, where we provide uh, limited social services um, for any natives living in the state of Indiana. Um, and we also work to eliminate barriers to employment, um, offer scholarships, and, and we do a lot of other um, initiatives such as civic engagement, um, health awareness. Um, and right now we are getting ready to open up a new Part of our center, which is going to be dedicated to recovery services um, since and it's going to be a uh, BIPOC black indigenous people of color focused so that it is a space where people of color can come and um, feel that it is made just for us um, and feel comfortable to share in their experiences. Um, so uh, I actually um, was made aware of the group. Um, um, this event a couple of years ago when, um, a former, uh, member of the American Indian movement who, uh, passed away, um, was my buddy Thomas. Um, and he has, um, known you all for quite a long time. And so, um, I was very honored to step into this role, um, for him and just to continue this relationship. So from my perspective as an indigenous woman, um, I believe that solidarity and collaboration, uh, between communities of color, specifically oppressed nations, um, indigenous nations and African nations is extremely crucial to any type of liberation. Um, and, and when we talk about solidarity, we talk about mutual solidarity. And so it's not just showing up at a protest. It's not just, you know, being um, kind of like an online activist and sharing a hashtag, uh, which there are, you know, multiple ways to raise awareness, but it is actively understanding and listening to and centering the voices of um, our fellow brothers and sisters from other oppressed communities. And so there's a lot of overlap um, with, uh, with what goes on um, with African liberation as well as indigenous liberation. Um, so we have these unique stories that still have a lot of similar, um, you know, circumstances and commonality. And so when I think about what the most important, what the difference is between, um, you know, what indigenous people and, and people from the, the, the continent of Africa are trying to accomplish versus some of these other movements that are going on. It really is not just about the moment and it is about the long term. And when we think about liberation, we also think about sovereignty. So allowing oppressed peoples to create our own narrative, to make decisions for ourselves, to govern ourselves, and to do that in a way that is uh, respectful and honoring our ancestral ways. I think that is the most important thing um, that people fail to understand uh, about social justice movements, if there is not an aspect of the traditional forms of governing, which is socialism, when you think tribally, whether it is indigenous nations to the Americas or indigenous nations to Africa, um, there is that it's about the whole. It is about taking care of the entire community. It is about putting your community above the self, above the ego, and understanding that that is how we are able to provide for our generations. That is how we are able to remain resilient and survive. Um, I think a lot of parallels that are going on right now are also important to highlight. Um, so when we think about the land back movement, when we think about African liberation, we cannot uh, leave out um, liberation for Palestine. And so 
in all of these situations, again, be they unique in our path, in our histories, there is a lot of commonality and that we are still um, fighting off, you know, hundreds of years later, the colonizers, the invaders, we are still dealing with the, it's not just the ramifications of past actions, the actions are continuing. And I think that is something that people who are outside of our communities often miss, because they don't take into consideration um, that they, they, they believe that this is something of the past. And so often when you hear people, when you're trying to educate someone, their, their response is, but this was so long ago. When we talk about what happened here in the Americas, when we talk about what happened in Africa and in the Middle East, their response is constantly that it is an ancient battle, that it's already been fought, and, you know, it's not their fault. But we have to remain adamant about highlighting what is going on now and how that is connected. So, um, so again, the American Indian movement and indigenous people across this uh, continent, um, and I say continent because um, indigeneity doesn't stop at the border. Borders are colonial. Um, borders are created by the colonizers. It is, a, it is a tactic to separate and divide tribal people who have been connected for centuries upon centuries. Um, and so... When we think about what is going on at the border, still, um, you know, this it, it's important to understand that this is not a political Democrat versus Republican type of issue. This is a colonizer versus indigenous people type of issue, because it doesn't matter. We, we see right now, it doesn't matter who is in the White House. The issue is still going on. The issue is still happening. Um, and so we have indigenous people who are from this continent, you know, being denied entry to part of our land that has always historically been part of our land. And there is a lot of parallels with what we see. Um, when we think about, um, you know, apartheid in South Africa, we think about apartheid in Palestine um, from the Israelis. Um, it, it is another, what they are doing at the border and put, forcing people into these camps. Um, and a lot of times they are corralling them in specific zones um, on both sides of the border. Um, so, and this is, this is how colonial powers continue to work together. They have a common goal. And that is why as oppressed people, we need to constantly remember what our common goal is. And we need to remember that there are ways to show solidarity. There are ways to highlight what is going on in our own communities. And, but we also have to understand when it is time to amplify and center the voices of our brothers and sisters from other communities who are hurting as well. Um, so that is just basically, I mean, I, I could go on, um, but like I said, I just wanted to kind of emphasize why the struggle for Af African liberation is so important and sacred to indigenous people of the Americas. It's not just that we can empathize. It's that we have a common goal and we have uh, for liberation and for sovereignty in the long term. And so we are in this for the long haul. Thank you. On behalf of the All African People's Revolutionary Party and all the daughters and sons of Africa and our brother sister organizations and allies, we would like to extend revolutionary thanks to Sister Carolina Castoreno Santana, a sister warrior in the fight for the liberation of the indigenous peoples within the context of the American Indian movement. And the All African People's Revolutionary Party has a very proud history of working with the American Indian movement for over three decades. This is consistent with our strategy to build alliances with brother sister organizations and allies in order to expedite, in order to speed up the liberation of Africa and all oppressed people. So we are very proud of our relationship with the American Indian movement. And we want to thank Sister Carolina for educating us about the struggles of indigenous people everywhere, but in particular in the United States. 
Now, this particular panel is called Galvanizing Women for Revolution. And as I said earlier, the All African People's Revolutionary Party has a women's wing, the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, which was founded in November of 1980. And one of our key strategic goals is to build alliances with other sister organizations, other women's wings, particularly on the African continent. And the reason for this strategic priority, brothers and sisters, is because in the Handbook of Revolutionary Warfare, written by Great Son of Africa, Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah, he called for the formation of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. That book was written in 1968. And not only did he call for the formation of our organization, he called for the building of the All African Committee for Political Coordination. The All African Committee for Political Coordination to link the struggling revolutionary parties and formations all over the African continent under one umbrella. So our next speaker is um, what we would call an AACP organization. She comes, her, her organization is called the Democratic Youth, sorry, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde and the Women's Wing Democratic Union of Guinean Women. And the AIGC has a long history of struggle in West Africa, in Guinea-Bissau, under the leadership of great son of Africa, Amikar Cabral, who was assassinated by the Portuguese colonialists in 1972. Now this sister, comrade sister engineer, Biloni Nama, Nantamba Nehasi is the Secretary General of UDEMU, the Democratic Union of Guinean Women. Women. Comrade Biloni Nama Nantamba Nasi is the Secretary General of the Democratic Union of Guinean Women, UDEMU, which is the women's wing of the PAIGC, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde that was founded in Conakry, the Revolutionary Republic of Guinea on the 18th of June, 1961. She is a member of the Political Bureau of the Central Committee of the Party and sits in on permanent commission meetings. She attended a PAIGC, which is the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde School, in a liberated zone. And due to her positive performance, she was selected as one of the best students and accordingly sent to the PAIGC pilot school established in Conakry, which is in Guinea in West Africa, near the PAIGC's main headquarters. The PAIG school was a result of the PAIGC Congress resolutions of 1964, Congreso de Casaca, that sought to train future political and technical cadre based upon a revolutionary curriculum that taught emancipation of women in theory and in practice to create the new woman and man. She was a pioneer in the PAIGC pioneers and was selected to study in revolutionary Cuba. She continued her political education there while being trained as a mechanized agricultural engineer. After graduation, she returned to Guinea-Bissau to work in the agricultural ministry to contribute toward increased production for the revolution. She remained active in the PAIGC and UDIMU 
the Democratic Union of Guinean Women in various positions. As a result of her faithfulness, the women of the PAIGC chose her to be the Secretary General of UDEMU at its first Congress in 2016. She participates in activities of the Pan-African Women's Organization, of which Udimu serves as one of its founders in 1962. Let's give warm revolutionary greetings to our beloved comrade, Udimu Secretary General, Engineer Biloni Nama Nantamba Nehase. Revolutionary greetings to all my strong first commuted sisters who have spoken today and brought the collective wisdom of our people, our ancestors. É que fala da emancipação da mulher. Nesse programa, destaca a emancipação da mulher e o panafricanismo. Fala da libertação total do povo africano em toda parte. O PAGC, no seu programa, refere à igualdade de gênero. Primero le damos gracias por la invitación de la República y que está siendo respetada. Porque el PSC, cuando tiene cualquier cosa a hacer, respeta la igualdad de género en toda parte y en todas las actividades. Se entera en cuenta un nivel cultural, profesional. Ou posição social, riqueza ou religião, não. O homem e a mulher obtêm o mesmo status em relação à família, trabalho e atividades políticas. Nós sabemos que o continente africano, a UA, UA, UA que atualmente é a unidade africana, Contém 52 estados, africana, conta atualmente com 52 estados na sua organização. A União Democrática das Mulheres, The Democratic Union of Union, 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 foi criada em 18 de junho de 1961, na República da Guiné Conakry, encabeçado pelo nosso saudoso e maldar Amílcar Lopes Cabral, durante a luta de libertação nacional da Guiné-Bissau, correspondia e segue representando a mulher guineense em toda a esfera da sociedade humana. A União Democrática das Mulheres da Guiné-Bissau estamos felizes para manter o continente africano no bom caminho da paz e democracia. Todos nós sabemos que o continente africano sofreu vários anos sob a dominação dos outros países e que no ano de 1962, em Dar Salaam, foi criada uma organização denominada Organização Pan-Africana das Mulheres, 
la República de Tanzania con la participación de 14 países libres y 10 movimientos de lucha de la Casa Nacional, entre los cuales estaba el país, los cuales estaba la Unión. A organização esta, conhecida em toda a parte do mundo, onde as mulheres demonstraram e continuaram a demonstrar o seu valor e dinamismo para o lado do homem, na conquista da independência de cada país, e seguem desempenhando o papel do mundo no processo de desenvolvimento de cada país. A reunião foi feita na Tanzânia para a criação da Panafricana de Mulheres, tem os seus objetivos atrasados, o papel da mulher, o papel da instituição, da arte, na educação, na garantia da paz, na garantia da democracia. A mulher africana continua a ser discriminada, mas... Ao mesmo tempo, ela tem vindo a conquistar espaços de lugares de trabalho e no lugar de tomar a decisão. E, finalmente, nós vamos fazer a nossa sociedade bonita e salva. Quando alguém tem um dedo cortado em uma ferida, em um braço, As we say, when somebody's finger is cut or their arm is wounded, it's the whole body that feels the pain. When we keep women in inferior, inferiority social positions, not only the women suffer, but the whole society suffers. Consequently, the society becomes retarded. Therefore, we must avoid injustice so that women undoubtedly take their position in society to make it beautiful and solid. We must abstain from any type of ingratitude toward our women and make our society just. Abstain from any type of oppression of our women and make our society more beautiful and more solid and more just. In relation to our theme for today's panel, galvanizing women, for Pan-Africanism, we want you to know that Ulu works with the majority of women in Guinness South. It's a mass organization. Ulu has this mass structure in every part of the country, in every village and neighborhood. Given this, we propose that those of us today, in today's panel, that we don't stop here, but we have systematic encounters, not only video conferences, but other types of encounters, as well as exchange experiences to strengthen our organizations. Organization decides everything. We must increase our friendship, our international solidarity among women. Before we end our brief remarks, we would like to salute. We salute and thank the organizing commission, the preparatory commission, along with all who contribute to making today's seminar a reality. We are also like to thank all the responsibles who are involved in social communications through the mass media throughout Africa and its diaspora. Viva African women's organizations. Viva the people of Guinea-Bissau. Viva the Democratic Union of Guinean Women. Uribu. Viva Africa. Viva international democracy. All the best to everyone. Thank you. Ready for revolution. Long live Udimu. Long live the PIGC. Forward to one unified socialist Africa. We want to seize this opportunity to thank Comrade Biloni Nama Nantamba Nasi for her inspiring revolutionary words about the role of African women with respect to galvanizing for Pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism is an objective. It is an objective that our people are organizing to achieve. Pan-Africanism is the total liberation and unification of our motherland, Africa, under scientific socialism. It's only when Mother Africa is 
economically and politically that every African woman, man, and child in Africa and in the African diaspora will be free. So it is the responsibility of all African women, of all African men and youth to organize for the liberation of Africa by joining an organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people. Join the PAIGC. Join the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Join any organization that is fighting for the liberation of the masses of our people. This is your responsibility as a conscious, responsible African woman or man. So thank you, Comrade Sister Biloni, for your revolutionary work within the Democratic Union of Guinean Women, which is the women's wing of the PAIGC, the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, which is based in Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. Brothers and sisters, this panel is galvanizing women for Pan-Africanism. And when you galvanize the people, you must be organized. You must be part of an organization because our people will achieve Pan-Africanism, your question to yourself today on African Liberation Day is what are you doing to expedite the liberation of our people? Are you sitting on the sidelines? Are you doing nothing for your people? Well, make that change today if that is your situation. Join the All African People's Revolutionary Party or any organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people. Great son of Africa, Kwame Toure says, the more you love the people, the more you work for the people. The more you work for the people, the more you want to know the people. The more you study and know the people, the more you love the people. The more you love the people, the harder you work for the people. Brothers and sisters, do you love your people? Are you willing to work for Pan-Africanism? Then you must join an organization fighting for the liberation of our people. Without ado, I am going to introduce our next speaker, Revolutionary Comrade Kehinde Zakaria, Sister Kehinde Zakaria, who is an organizer for the Amilcar Cabral Ideological School Movement. Now, Amilcar Cabral is one of our great African leaders. He was born September 12, 1924 in Bafata, Guinea-Bissau, in the west coast of Africa, one of Portugal's former African colonies. On January 20th, 1973, 50 years ago, our great son of Africa, Amilcar Cabral, was murdered by the fascist Portuguese assassins. The fascist Portuguese assassins just months before the National Liberation Movement in which he played a central role, won the independence of Guinea-Bissau. Now, our comrade has physically disappeared, but his legacy continues. His ideology, his revolutionary ideas continues in the form of the Amicar Cabral Ideological School Movement. For over 500 years, Portuguese colonialism was built upon the enslavement and the systematic pillaging of its African colonies, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Sao Tome, Precipe, 
Angola and Cape Verde in West Africa. And our people fought for over 500 years for the liberation of Guinea-Bissau. And under the leadership of great son of Africa, Amilcar Cabral, Guinea-Bissau was liberated. Let's give Guinea-Bissau and our people a round of applause. This is a major achievement in the African Revolution. So the Amilcar Cabral Ideological School Movement is named after great son of Africa, Amilcar Cabral, to continue his legacy, but most importantly, to train our people about the importance of ideological development and growth, because the capitalist system has indoctrinated us to think we're not African that Africa will never be free. But Amilcar Cabral and other great revolutionaries around the world know that Africa will be liberated. All we need to do is to politically educate the masses of African people everywhere so that those backward ideas can be eradicated. And this is the objective, one of the main objectives of the Amilcar Cabral ideological school movement which was founded in Guinea-Bissau to commemorate the work and the revolutionary example and the revolutionary ideas of great son of Africa, Amilcar Cabral. So Sister Kehende Zakaria will speak about the Amilcar Cabral ideological school movement as part of the galvanizing efforts of African women to achieve the objective of Pan-Africanism. Welcome, Kehinde Zakaria. Revolutionary greetings to all comrades, solidarities with the Pan-African Revolutionary Party, revolutionary greetings to all African Revolutionary Union, solidarities greetings to all participants at this event. I think we should stand to congratulate ourselves for this celebration of African Liberation Day and for being part of the events. I'm by name, Zakaria Kehinde. Comrade Zakaria Kende from Nigeria representing Azizem. And I appreciate the organizer, organizer for sending an invitation to participate in these events. I'm honored to be invited to make, to make a contribution on the topic which says Governizing Women from Pan Africanism. Pan Africanism is an ideology and movement that calls for global solidarity and cooperation among Africa in order to liberate ourselves from oppression, imperialism, domination. How can we evolve our women in this struggle in Pan Africanism? That's the question we should ask. And we must know that they need to be aware that both the female and men need to develop skills and values for leadership. For example, in my association, as I said, for example, we believe in developing both the female and the male in leadership role. No discrimination. We see every member of our association as an equal member. We build our women to be able to be self developed to be able to contribute and stand on their own and fight against any form of oppression. We don't see any male as a superior being. No, we see ourselves as equal. We need to come to that result. We all have a role to play in order to make our movement forward. Another point to be noted that women empowerment should base, begin with developing their capacity and understand the society they have. And before we can empower a woman, we need to know their capacity. We need to assess them. We need to know what and what they need in order to be self-dependent. We need to also let them understand the society they have. Let them see the struggle, the past leader, the past leaders, what they have done to the society, especially the the role model, our role model, which is uh, Willie Mandela, Ivana Hoffman, and a lot of women. Uh, Fumilai Rasokuti, who has contributed to the development of our African society. Also, liberating African women to seek education. Yes, because education is the foundation of any learning. Even Amika Cabra believe that we all learn every day. We need to learn. As long as we are on earth, we must learn. So also, that gives us an opportunity to educate our women, to know more about our society, to gain formal education, so that they could contribute, they could contribute to the development of our African society. 
gender equality is another issue that we know. And gender equality is the secret source of a new pan-African society. That women play a vital role in developing of pan in developing pan-Africanism. We must know that we must be equal, no superior, no superior being, no uh, inferior being. We are all the same. So in order to have a new pan-African society, we need to see everybody, whether women or men, or we need to see ourselves as equal member of the society. Also, let me talk about the contributions our African women have made in colonial in the restricting colonialism, include. The 1929 protest against in uh, a, a protest of Nigeria women against colonial taxation. Same similar protests happened in Togo in 1932, and in Cameroon also another they also rise up in protest protesting against colonial policy. You can see that our women have contributed, like they always fight against any oppressions. So our problem here is also our African member. They are trying to suppress our women. We are supposed not to be. For us to have a good, for us to have a new Pan African uh, society that will, that will create a new ideology is by educating, involving our women. See them as also a role model, a partner in contributing to the development of Pan Africanism. I think we can see that women also play major, also contribute major roles in Pan African society. In addition, the relationship between African women organization and Pan Africanism goes hand in hand. As we could see in case of Winnie Mandela. And the sacrifice of African Nation Congress women in the struggle to defeat apartheid in the South Africa. We could see them, all these people have been contributing to the development of our society. So no woman is lesser than a man. We must know that. So for any successful revolution, for any successful, we must see and involve our women and also see them as equal members of that society because we all have common enemy which is the oppressed oppressor and the capitalist so we must in order to fight against them we have to involve our women and liberate them educate them let them see this let them know their social history let them know our past hero like Kwame Kuma, Thomas Ankara, El Lumumba, all those leaders and um Winnie Mandela even at Hoffman and a lot of role model that they've already the fight how they fight colonialism how they fight against capitalism in Africa and there's a say of Kwame, uh, Kwame Kuma that there is no true total freedom without freedom of other country that we can never have a total freedom if one country is still being colonized is still being oppressed so our glory belongs to Every Africa, if we want to have a free African society today, we must believe in internationalism, unity, stand together, and liberating our women so that they could be, they could also fight against any oppression within Africa. Like I'm saying, like I was saying, we also need to encourage our women to know history and to contribute to Africa's women's struggle. Like they should know the history of African women's struggle, like how they contribute to the development of struggle. Because I've never seen it in history that you see that any successful history does not involve the women. But most contribution, most um, our past hero contribution, especially the female, have not been really put into history. We just said, okay, Winnie Mandela is, uh, we've been hearing about Winnie Mandela because she has contributed a lot in South Africa revolution. But there are some. Okay, like for example, in Nigeria, Fumila uh, Rasa also has made a contribution to the successful uh, in fighting against colonialism or fighting against any form of oppression in Nigeria. Also, we must know that women as they work as equal member in the revolution and in developing society, we all have equal rights. We all must stand against oppression, imperialism. To let them know that we are one and we are ready to fight against any oppression disturbing or, or disturbing our peace of mind in African country. Lastly, African women has made collective contribution in liberation of African people. We, they've made a lot of contribution. They made a lot of contribution. So as such, for new Pan-Africanism today, we need to involve our women. We must involve them. To have a successful revolutionary 
our society. On behalf of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, we thank uh, Comrade Kehindi Zakaria, who is the National Women's Coordinator of the Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria. Now, I just wanted to make that point very clear that this Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement is based in Nigeria. So my sister has raised so many important points about the need to liberate African women in Nigeria and in other parts of the continent because when African women are free, then we can expedite, we can speed up the liberation of our people everywhere. African women make up at least 52% of the African nation worldwide. And when that energy, when that productive force, when those revolutionary ideas are properly organized and channeled and focused towards the liberation of Africa, we are going to get to Pan-Africanism so much faster with the liberation of our women. I want to share with you a powerful chance that was voiced by 20,000 South African women who marched on Pretoria on August the 9th, 1956, which symbolizes the galvanizing energy of African women moving towards Pan-Africanism. You have struck the women. You have struck a rock. You have dislodged a boulder. You will be crushed. Repeat it with me. You have struck the women. You have struck a rock. You have struck a rock. You have dislodged a boulder. You have dislodged a boulder. You will be crushed. You will be crushed. And for the right. <laughs> Forward to one unified socialist Africa. Now, those defiant words were uttered by African women in South Africa, but they symbolize the struggle of African women in Nigeria, Guinea-Bissau, Canada, the United States, all over Africa, that our boulder is being dislodged and imperialism will be crushed forever and we will achieve a unified socialist Africa. Thank you, my beloved sister comrade, Keinda. Forever, so, never, back with never. To continue this positive momentum and galvanizing of African women to uh, achieve Pan Africanism by introducing uh, our next sister warrior, uh, Sister Najat Kaya. Sister Najat. Kaya. And before I call on my sister to speak, I want to give you some background history of the National Union of Saharawi Women, the National Union of Saharawi Women. The organization is mostly active in the Sahari refugee camps in Algeria, where it is a powerful force within the Polisario, the Saharian Republic. It is internationally active in organizing support for Sahari women and the Sahari cause, but also campaigns for women's rights within the exile community and in political decision-making. As a consequence of this, and the special circumstances of the Western Sahara war years, the situation of Sahari women has improved. There are some women in the government, and I want to share with you uh, some of the objectives of the National Union of Sahari Women. To raise consciousness 
about their role in the struggle for the liberation and independence of the Western Sahara in Africa, to orient women in the social and political fields to improve their level of education and training, to deepen the role of the family, so important, especially on the educational level, to guarantee equal education between boys and girls with the basis of respect and equality in society. And as always, there's always more to be told, brothers and sisters, but I'm going to call on my beloved comrade, Sister Najat Kaya of the National Union of Sahari Women to address us on this occasion of the historic African Liberation Day. Salute a lover filled with love to all revolutionary, revolutionary African brothers. My name is Najat Khaya Abdullah. I am from the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic and I am an executive in the National Union of Sahrawi Women. I would like to send my best regards and greetings to all my free African brothers whose names we are always proud to attribute their African names to fighters and strugglers against all forms of injustice and oppression and colonization. The topic raised today is an important event. In this important event is of prime importance no, to us Africans and notably to us Sahrawi people. In this important day, which is the African Liberation Day, under the title Forward Ever, Forward Ever to Worldwide Pan African Unity. We as Africans must draw a line and fight all that hinders our unity as a continent and join our words and effort and push forward our continent. We are those who will make the Pan-African unity. We are those who will push forward our continent and therefore we must follow the following points among which are to break barriers that hinder us, to limit and put an end to our suffering and obstacles that hinder our way. But in this special day, we will share these barriers and sufferings and obstacles that have long hindered our growth and put an end to it as Africans, as we wish to see our continent free and thriving. Allow me to highlight some points some of the suffering of the Sahrawi people under the Moroccan occupation. The Sahrawi people, day after day, is growing st stronger and more resilient and determined as, despite its continuous suffering as a part of uh, whether in uh, the occupied lands or in refugee camps and the remainders in diaspora. Among the biggest obstacles that stand between them is uh, the, f the, li the liberty of the remaining uh, uh, African occupations, the, uh, the Moroccan occupation, which stands as an obstacle without extending a, help of ha a helping hand, nor is, is, uh, is the government showing a flexibility in taking decisions uh, that guarantees each party its due right. Uh, today, after the day after the Moroccan occupation breached the ceasefire accords, uh, which took place in 1991, uh, that uh, that allows the party that allows the Sahrawi people to be free, the the ceasefire was breached and uh, led us to return to point zero and uh, go for armed struggle, which is not the best uh, choice. Uh, as the Sahrawi people's suffering is being trafficked and we must find a solution that delivers their due right and put an end to their suffering for since forever 
therefore does not leave the Sahrawi people without with any option but to to fight with the arms to free their land because along across the years uh, the Sahrawi people has given lessons in peace uh, and security so that the African continent is free and secure the Sahrawi people wish uh, to find uh, their right without any bloodshed however since forever the Sahrawi people have long been used and procrastinated in ending the suffering and not finding a solution regarding external and internal col colonialism in Africa for external colonialism it, which is the legacy of colonies in terms of not observing the rights and taking into account personal interests only only personal interests which has resulted in disagreements and conflicts in the continent as for internal disagreements which is what we Sahrawi people are currently experiencing when one African continent is occupying uh, an African country is occupying another African country not finding a solution or finding an imaginary solution that puts the Sahrawi people into suffering and division and not ending said suffering colonialism we do not accept colonialism for ourselves nor does any country approve of it to its governments. Every state has the right to exercise its full authority and sovereignty and build its institutions and society and the state on the whole of its territories. Therefore, in this day, in the African Liberation Day, we appeal to all Africans to end, to put an end to the Sahrawi people's suffering by finding a solution that guarantees its full, undeniable right by exercising its full authority and constituting their land and giving them their freedom in this African Liberation Day, allow me to congratulate you on this important day, on the African Liberation Day. To all free Africans, we must stand together hand in hand. We must be together, we must stand as one person and fight and move forwards. All my pride and joy, my best regards, a revolutionary greeting from one revolutionary to all revolutionary Africans. Let's move forwards. Thank you. And let's move forwards with our continent. Thank you. Long live the Sahari revolution. Long live the Sahari people. They will be free. Forward ever to one unified socialist Africa. On behalf of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, we thank Sister Comrade Najat Kaya of the National Union of Sahari Women, educating us, for politically educating us about the history of the brave Sahari people, and in particular, the Sahari women in the Western Sahara of Africa. Thank you, Sister Najat. Um, I want to bring to a closing this panel on galvanizing women for Pan-Africanism by repeating that the theme of African Liberation Day 2021 is forward ever to worldwide Pan-African union unity forward ever to worldwide Pan-African unity. And African women have a very important role to play in the struggle for Pan-Africanism. And this panel has allowed us to benefit from the political education of our sister comrade, Carolina Castoreno Santana of the American Indian Movement, uh, Sister Engineer Biloni Nama Nanamba Nehasi 
of uh, the democratic, uh, sorry, the, the Democratic Union of Guinean Women, which is the women's wing of the PAIGC, which is the African Party for the Independence of Cape, Guinea and Cape Verde, and also Sister Kehinde Zakaria of the Amikar Cabral Ideological School, School Movement, which is based in Nigeria, even though it is named after great son of Africa, Amilcar Cabral, who was born and raised in Guinea-Bissau. The movement, the ideological school movement is based in Nigeria. And of course, our sister uh, Najat Kaya of the National Union of Sahali Women. We want to thank all of our sister comrades for participating in this historic African Liberation Day for the work that they are doing on the ground to advance the liberation of the indigenous people, to advance the liberation of African people, because it's only through organization of the masses of African people that we will be. So I want to... Uh, Thank you, brothers and sisters who have been listening. And the struggle continues forward to one unified socialist Africa. Okay, I guess at this point, we're going to be having a cultural presentation. And uh, next on, it's a video by Abena Disro, affectionately called the High Priestess of Poetry. And you know the community gave her that name here in Washington, D.C. And she's going to do a poem called Concrete Babies. She didn't want me to say very much about it, so you can just start it right on up. Enjoy. Good afternoon. My name is Avina Disro, known as the High Priestess of Poetry. And I'm here celebrating African Liberation Day 2020, which is coming. It'll be our first virtual ever. And when celebrating, they asked me to do a cultural presentation. And when I do a cultural presentation, I like to plant seeds upon the mind that can elevate a person's consciousness and for them to ponder upon what I've said. And our children, our youth are in a crisis. They are in a crisis. They've been brought up in cities with concrete everywhere and they're steadily putting concrete down and pulling up the trees. And our children have become disconnected to nature. And when you're connected to nature, you're more in tune to what's going on in your environment. So this is in tribute to the mothers, the mothers that are becoming mothers and to the fathers and to all the people over diaspora. I say, everything is in divine order. What goes around surely does come back around to you. And as the right hand is receiving, the left hand should be giving for universal harmony and good vibrations. A child's first and biggest, greatest start is not through Head Start, it's through breastfeeding. And there really is enough in this universe for everybody. What's yours? is yours. No one can take it away from you. You see, there are concrete babies walking through wounds of moms carrying torches looking for freedom through the marble eyes of a microwave generation. Beep, beep. They want it right now. 
beep beep, it's already there. You see, playgrounds used to be grass and trees with tires hanging from trees, swinging high, swinging low to earth's vibrations. Now dead, solid, covered in concrete with playgrounds, scraping knees, you see. Concrete babies just get up and sit motionless before technology's eyes entering into cyberspace. Who's watching who? Delete. Who's watching who? Completely delete. You see, saving is not really saving for you. It's in the backup folder for Big Brother to use when you fly high to bring you back down to his every need. Cancerous babies, toxic waves of technology and sunken faces. Who's going to save the babies? Who's going to save the babies? Miseducations and disgraces of dignity now gone. Mad and hating your own kind. Mad and snapping with a trigger. I'm going to kill you. That's another piece of me now gone. Filled with more hate. Is it too late to save our babies? Priests breaking vows to seduce and abuse. Children fighting wars at 10, 11, and 12 years old. Full-blown AIDS babies, incest, and molestation. Tell me, who's going to save our babies? Who's going to save our babies? You see, the innermost thoughts of my mind sometimes seems to wander from time to time to places I've never been but seek to find. And even if I loved you less, it would still be more than you know. I say, Yahoo. Okay, if I have any final words on that, I would say, where would we be without our culture? It's very important that we keep our children, our youth, desensitized to all these negative and injustices that are going on in this world and, and th throughout the continent. Help them to be aware and, and instill in them the importance to travel as much as they can, I say. And back to the program. Thank you very much. Revolutionary thanks and praises, Sister Abina, and thanks and praises uh, to my sister, High Priestess, for sharing revolutionary African culture with the masses of our people who are participating in African Liberation Day. So revolutionary thanks to you, uh, High Priestess, um, for your poetry and for your inspiration. Thank, thank you, thank you, comrade. Brothers and sisters, uh, we, we are now moving into the question and answer session. And the purpose of the question and answer session is to raise our collective consciousness as a people. To ask a question and receive an answer is an exchange of revolutionary value because we all learn from the question and by listening, we learn from the answer. And in this revolutionary context, we elevate our collective consciousness as Africans, and that is a very important part of building Pan-Africanism, is to train revolutionary cadre, revolutionary leaders who study and practice revolution within a revolutionary organization. So bear that in mind that everything has a purpose, the question and answer period is to elevate or raise the collective consciousness of our people, the sister organizations. 
So I'm now going to open up for questions to stream through. Uh, let's see, I hope I get this right. Uh, okay, so one of the questions is, what has the fight against patriarchy have to do with Pan-Africanism? What has the fight against patriarchy, patriarchy have to do with Pan-Africanism? And so I'm going to um, open up for the panelists to respond to that question. I don't see that that question was directed to a particular panelist. So I'm going to ask uh, my sister Kehinde Zakaria to answer that question. Hello. 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 So that's just for everybody. Yeah, I'm not talking of patriarchy. It's talking about oppression, like in a, like in a community, they believe in inferior inferiority of the women. They believe in oppressing any women that stand that, that want to stand on his or her own. So now in our pan-Africanism, we must fight against <laughs> such ideology. We must let them know that no female. Even according to Thomas Sankar, he said there is no true social revolution without liberation of the women. We must let them know that women also have a contribution in this part of Africanism. So we must fight against any kind of oppression against women. So what he has to <laughs> is that we have to let our, our women know that. Let them know, wake their consciousness. Let them know that, okay, they also have a right in contributing to the, develop, to the development of the society. We must let them know that nobody can oppress them. We can, we can, we can show um, our, our leaders, uh, Dandara, Ivana Hoffman, Fumlera, so Kutsi, um, Mini Mandela, all those people, they have a women that they stand against any form of oppression. Hello. So our common enemy in Africa is imperialism and capitalist. So in order to us to fight successful, to fight against those, we have to let, we have to empower our women. Let them be self-developed. Let them fight against the common enemy. So that is all about. Hope I answered the question. I send answers to your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Comrade Kehinde. You highlighted the fact that we need to fight against the common enemy, and this is an ideological fight um, against patriarchy. Our next question is uh, directed to uh, Comrade uh, Carolina Castoreno Santana, and the question is, America is a settler colony. What is the American Indian movement's view of the settlers? So thank you. That's a great question. So the issue is, um, unfortunately, it's not able to be answered so kind of unilaterally. Um, and, and we've even seen some, some change recently within our chapter. So, um, Last year, during the George Floyd protests, um, we had an issue where the new um, kind of chairman of the Grand Governing Council of like the main AIM chapter in Minneapolis um, was seeming to be thanking uh, police officers, um, not for what had happened, because they originally were protesting and assisting the community, uh, but they were kind of taking a more passive uh, pacifist kind of role after a while. And so our chapter actually made the decision to, uh, to, to separate. Um, so we're no longer sanctioned. And so there is kind of like a diversity of opinions. I think there are some people who are, some of our older generations maybe are tired of fighting um, the same way that we've been fighting over the decades and centuries. Um, but there are there's so, there's so much life within the young people. And I think that's where we really saw a movement, because when we see what's going on 
across our communities, uh, within the indigenous community, within the black community, within, um, you know, the Muslim community, Latinos, immigrants in general, um, we do really see kind of like this level of just being fed up. Um, so where more young people are being motivated and they're being activated and they're in the streets and they are actually bringing this justice. So things that we saw like with the George Floyd protest last year, um, more people, uh, you know, we were able to see some sort of progress when it comes to, you know, murders by police, uh, murders by the state. Um, that's not a reason to get complacent. So, it's in a nutshell, it's hard for us to say that there is one kind of unified opinion towards the settlers. But in general, in general, and this is not just through the movement, but this is across um, the American and in, the indigenous community across the continent um, that that we are fed up, that, that we are fed up, that there is no reason to start, um, you know, being the, the peaceful kind of like noble savage that they try to paint us as um, as being cooperative. Uh, so the movement of land back has been gaining a lot of steam um, over the past couple of years. And I think that it has to do with the solidarity that we have with other mov uh, movements. So I don't think that that there is in general a complacency with settlers there is sort of more of a demand um that we continue to that we continue to receive justice or we continue to fight for justice that we do not let them off the hook in any capacity no matter what generation we're dealing with thank you very much comrade carolina castorino santana who is a sister warrior in the American Indian movement, um, who is basically saying that the struggle continues, the resistance continues, and our, uh, you know, our allies in AIM continue to fight against settler colonialism by using different strategies and tactics. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking at the questions and uh, comrade, Bioloni of the Democratic Union of Guinean Women uh, would like to respond to the previous question about patriarchy and Pan-Africanism. So I will uh, turn over to her. I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize that she was in the Okay. Question. Eu primeiramente agradeço a oportunidade que me deram para poder dar a voz para mim. First, I'd like to thank the First of all, I would like to thank you for this opportunity to respond to this question. What, and the question about uh, what is the relationship between patriarchy and patriarchy? In my opinion, patriarchy has no role, no space in our society. From the very beginning of our party, our party is against patriarchy. The organization of the world is created in the world of the fools of the fighting. The whole identity of the party is not the fighting. The parties of the party is the pan-Africanism. Or led by the pan-Africanism. In Guinea Bissau, we have laws of gender, bondage, and a constitution. Before we had a constitution, with our organization of the Jewish pioneers, making sure that we were in our schools, making sure the women were the same role, making sure they had the same position. Those that have practiced the fields of Yeah. 
consciousness against cartridges and that's an old role thank you so much Thank you, Sister uh, Biloni Nama Nantamba Nasi for answering uh, the question about uh, patriarchy. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the full response, um, but I have revolutionary confidence that it was very powerful and empowering. So thank you, my sister. Uh, there is another question in the lineup how can we resurrect the histories of revolutionary African women that have been erased? So how can we resurrect the histories of revolutionary African women that have been erased? And so I'm going to ask Sister Comrade Najat Kaya to respond to that question. Sister Najat Kaya who is a, a sister warrior in the National Union of Sahari Women in West Sahara. Is Sister Najat Kaya available? Is she available to answer that question? Okay, if she's not available, I'm going to direct that question to Sister Kehinde Zakaria of the Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement in Nigeria. Sister Kehinde, is she available to answer that question? I will repeat the question is, how can we resurrect the histories of revolutionary African women that have been erased? Okay, well, I will answer the question then if our sister is not available. I know I'm not a panelist, but I am an organizer for the AAPRP. My name is Sister Tandiwe, and I am also a proud member of the women's wing of the AAPRP, which is called the All African Women's Revolutionary Union. Um, one of the ways that we can resurrect the history of revolutionary African women is by engaging in consistent work and study within a revolutionary organization. The reason for that is that by studying with other uh, revolutionary cadre, by studying with other revolutionary leaders, for example, within the AAPRP and the Women's Wing, you build a collective consciousness very quickly. You can clarify points that you don't understand about those histories and develop um, an increase in your, your revolutionary consciousness, but not only the consciousness, but your revolutionary practice. Because theory and practice are dialectically interconnected. When you study, whatever you're studying within the revolutionary organization must be put into practice. And then when you apply it in practice, you must go back and study. So there's a dialectical relationship 
between studying the history of African women and implementing what you have learned in order to advance the liberation of our people. If we just study, 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 we become bourgeois intellectuals who just study and don't implement. But when we study revolutionary histories of Udemu, the Democratic uh, Union of Guinean Women, the Sahari women of the AAWRU, and we put that into practice by organizing African Liberation Day, by recruiting our people into these revolutionary formations. That's how we galvanize the people and move them closer to Pan-Africanism. Theory and practice are dialectically interconnected. So in order to resurrect the histories of revolutionary African women, we need to study in a work-study circle or a cell of revolutionaries in order to expedite and increase our revolutionary consciousness. And with the revolutionary consciousness, we take revolutionary action. I hope that answers the question of how can, they, how can we resurrect the histories of revolutionary African women that have been erased? Okay. I'm looking at the stream of questions. There's a question here for comrade uh, Carolina Castorino Santana, one of our sister warriors in the American Indian movement. The question is, sister Carolina, what is your opinion about the notion that the ruling structure is not capable of being receptive to explanations about your social economic plight because they are inflected with a psychological psychosis that is in desperate need of mental health treatment more so than education. So it's about what's your opinion about this idea that the ruling structure is not capable of being receptive to your explanations about your social economic plight because it's like a psychological psychosis. Yeah, so that's a great question, actually. Actually, so what we're what we have to understand is that okay, so white supremacy is the system with which we're all fighting. And so even those from the ruling class, from the colonial class, who are who are sympathetic to any of our plights or who are trying to take a progressive route and be about justice, they still themselves are having to unlearn. Um, and kind of deconstruct the privilege um, and the framework of white supremacy that they've been raised in. So, um, so it's a great question. So I think this is why it highlights why you cannot become complacent in any way. Um, it highlights why it's very important to stop allowing people to police, tone police, um, how we respond to injustice and how we respond to oppression. So for those who try to put um, an emphasis on nonviolence and, and, and that type of approach, they have to understand that you cannot constantly um, be passive. You cannot constantly take the higher road when you are dealing with an entire class of people who have no problem taking the lower road, who have no problem playing dirty in this game, so to speak. So I think that's why, you know, like, um, I think of a by any means necessary approach. It's not advocating for kind of like destruction. It's not advocating um, putting violence at the center, but understanding that, you know, um, exchanging roses <laughs> with our oppressors is never going to get us the type of liberation that we seek as an oppressed people. Um, I do think, however, that forming alliances with white leftists who are equally racial uh who is are are equally dedicated to racial justice as much as they are economic justice is important but that's very but that's something that's very key because often if you try to form alliances with white leftists they are so focused on the classist structure and and class solidarity and the class struggle that they don't necessarily all the time understand um the urgency to 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 deconstruct white supremacy because capitalism cannot exist without white supremacy. So there are a lot of people who try to say that, um, you know, racism is an offshoot 
of capitalism. And we all know that that's not true, because if we were able, you know, prior to capitalism, we still had the issue of white supremacy. And it was the invasion of the Americas and the transatlantic slave trade that really was allowed to kind of give birth to American capitalism and American exceptionalism. So um, it's very important for both. But when you do find those rare kind of like white leftist allies, I prefer to say accomplices over allies because accomplices are not afraid of getting their hands dirty. It's important for those people to understand the plight, to put their bodies and their privilege on the line so that they are the ones shouting down their family members. They are the ones forcing those uncomfortable conversations. When it comes to physical protests, they are the ones forming that barrier of protection for people of color to be able to express ourselves and fight for justice safely. Um, that's important, but it's also important to make sure these are never the type of people who seek to profit off of their uh, performative kind of alliance, their performative kind of um uh, allyship. So it has to be people who are willing to center oppressed voices and highlight oppressed voices. Um, and it and it is a struggle. I think that by taking our own kind of like inventory of mental health um, and and understanding how our communities are, are affected by internalized white supremacy um, and the things that we have to fight within our own communities, I think that that's uh, the most important aspect because if you can decolonize and you kind of can deconstruct that in your own community, you are better weaponized against the ruling class. Um, so it's it's definitely a combination of many factors, but that that's how I look at the issue. Thank you, Comrade Carolina, for answering that question. There's many facets to that question. The struggle has many levels and dimensions, and it's complicated, but it's also simple in that we're saying everyone listening to African Liberation Day today who is not in an organization, you must join an organization for the liberation of our people. If you say you love your people, you must demonstrate that through your revolutionary action. And so one of the most important things, one of the most important messages today is to join an organization fighting for the liberation of the people. If you're in an organization, you have a responsibility to increase your role and output within that organization. So thank you again, Comrade Carolina, for responding to that question. We're now going to go back to that important question about the resurrection of the histories. I'm going to read it because uh, Comrade uh, Biloni and Comrade uh, Kehinde are available to respond. I'm going to read the question first. How can we resurrect the histories of revolutionary African women that have been erased? So I'm going to call on... Uh, Sister Comrade Biloni Nama Nantamba Nasi, who is uh, the Secretary General of the Democratic Union of Guinea, to answer that question. Yes. I would like to thank you again for the opportunity to respond to this question. My name is Mani Mama 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 Mama. In my opinion, so let's see that history. This is the first story. First of all, talk about what is the exact basis of history. The 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 even in some of the same sizes of the government, it's just glorified as a woman. So, the woman, I said, the favorite only by the right of the social media. Actually, it's little by little, making sure that. Thank you so much. 
Revolutionary thanks and praises to uh, Sister Biloni Nama Nantamba Nehasi for answering the question. Um, we'll now turn to Sister Kehinde Zakaria, who is the National Women's Coordinator of the Amakar Cabral Ideological School Movement. And I would just uh, remind our speakers to speak at a moderate pace so that the interpreters can accurately interpret the information. Thank you so much. So that is good as well. Um, how can we address the issue that has been raised of our women, of our women, uh, women? The, it's very simple, yes, yeah, that we create a channel. We create a channel for our women. Yeah, the past uh, women leader that they've taken a, a role in um of in fighting oppression and any form of uh, anti-social um anti-oppression or imperialism. Um, can, for example, in Nazism, and after uh, we have national body, we still have um women leader forum leader, like women forum leadership. Now we create a group for our women. We talk about our past history, like past history of our African women, how they were able to fight any oppression, how to and how to how to um fight against uh, colonialism and any form of oppression affecting us. Now, me for um now, how did I know about Ivana Hoffman Dandara? It was through um through uh, training class. It was through training class I know about Winnie, Winnie Mandela, Ivana Hoffman, <laughs> um Dandara and a lot of African uh, women's uh, leaders, who they fight against any form of violence. So the way, the best way to to bring back the memory, to let our people is by creating a group like our women. Let them know, tell them about, tell them to read about this leader. Let them, tell them to read about this um this leader, like this uh African uh, women leader. Tell them to read about it to know. How do you know how they've contributed to the development of Pan Africanism to the development of Africa? So that's the best way because most roles that the, uh, most women are they are not been talking much. We see uh, we have um Kwame Kuma, we have we know how those leaders, we know Michael Hex, we know them. What about our female leaders who have fight against any form of oppression? We need to know them. We need to take their role, their steps, how they fight, how they comfort all those oppression, and they're able to succeed. So I think the best way is to organize a class within the female. Teach them, let them be exposed to these roles, to this uh, history, to African women history, how they live and how they fight against form of any form of uh, oppression. Thank you. On behalf of the All African People's Revolutionary Party, and in particular, the women's one of the AAPRP, which is the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, I want to thank you, all of the panelists, for making an outstanding contribution to this panel on galvanizing women or African women for Pan-Africanism. I want to remind you that the theme of African Liberation Day is forward ever to worldwide Pan-African unity, forward ever to worldwide Pan-African unity. This is the 58th commemoration of African Liberation Day. And if there's any message that I can leave with you, mighty daughters and sons of Africa, is to join an organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people. Join the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Join uh, the PAIGC, which is the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde. Join any organization that is fighting for the liberation of our people because it's only when the masses of our people are organized and politically educated under a common revolutionary idea, ideology 
that is focused on the liberation of Africa, that we will achieve pan-Africanism, which is in an objective, the total liberation and unification of Africa under a just collective system called scientific socialism. I want to close with the words of great son of Africa, Kwame Ture, who uh, was an outstanding revolutionary leader in our party. He says, the more you love the people, the more you work for the people. The more you work for the people, the more you want to know the people. The more you study and know the people, the more you love the people. The more you love the people, the harder you work for the people. Forward to one unified socialist Africa. Long live the All African Women's Revolutionary Union. Long live UDIMU. Long live the American Indian Movement. Long live the people of the Western Sahara. And long live the Amakar Cabral ideological school movement. Forward ever. Wow, that was, this has been some kind of program here. I, program here. I am so excited, so enthusiastic, but I really want you to hold on to your heart as you hear this song here by the Midnight Reggae Band. I wanted to honor the lead singer, Von Benjamin. He's the lead singer of Midnight. He died suddenly on a Monday. He was 50 years old. His death rocked the Virgin Islands and the community in the reggae world at large. He released over 1,500 songs, his spellbinding words steeped in biblical verse, historical injustices, African liberation, and the teachings of the Ethiopian emperor and Rastafarian divinity, Haile Selassie. It was intended to help build a more cognizant and compassionate society. He left us a profoundly influential, distinctive legacy. You can feel the spirit of the person in the song and the spirit of the song as we go to Mama Africa. Oh, 
Cause she did not find me with a four string guitar and with a empty belly. Man is true, got jack or skin. Man put roof and bed under mommy. When we did run it on the local line, full time, I know we musically in time. I find I keep seeing all time. We we'll never respect nobody. I was going under in I man start to over scene. One more chance, one more shot. Jump on my bed for the sweet by and by. I man start to over. Glad to be alive. Mama, Mama, Mama. Still I call you mama May you never be rude Controlled by no young kid Allah Oh Africa And still I call you mama May prosperity prove Hey, hey, Africa I belong, I belong Thank you very much. I'm Abena Disro Morris, and that ends our cultural presentation, and we'll continue on with the program. Thank you. Revolutionary greetings to all my strong, fierce, committed sisters who have spoken today and brought the collective wisdom of our people, our ancestors, and their own brilliant minds. And even more importantly, these sisters continue the work to bring clarity about our people's needs and the path to our liberation and sovereignty. Today, we acknowledge our revolutionary mothers who are still with us like Comrade Teodora Gomez, who as a young woman served on the battlefield for the independence of Guinea-Bissau. And as an elder, she serves as a seasoned cadre of the PAIGC and the Democratic Union of Guinean Women, Udemu and Haja Andre Toure, mother of Guinea Conakry, who was persecuted harshly after President Secretary's death, but remained steadfast, keeping not only his memory alive, but the memory of the revolutionary Guinean nation, educating and igniting a spark in Guinean youth to continue the struggle. My own mother, Sarazai Sevano, a 40 plus year member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party and the All African Women's Revolutionary Union, and all the elder sisters of the AAPRP and the AAWRU who continue to work for our objective, Pan-Africanism, the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. Have no doubt, capitalism hears its own death knell, and as its impending demise becomes clearer to those it exploits, it becomes more desperate. It shifts and slides, maneuvers, and cloaks itself in shiny clothing with hopes of saving itself and prolonging its reign. Two of capitalism's most effective tools in Africa are neocolonialism and patriarchy, both affecting women harshly. Capitalism in its neocolonialist disguise called most African governments pretends to be from the people, of the people, by the people, and for the people. It holds free and fair elections, and sometimes it doesn't. It elects African women to legislative bodies and showcases lady entrepreneurs and millionaires selling them to us as aspirations. At the same time, it promotes husband's domination over household economies, subjecting women to dependence, indignities and abuse and severely reducing their potential to produce and create. It remands girls to the home where education is limited to what the parents can provide. It forces marriages of 14-year-old girls who are sacrificed to secure an economic boost for their families. It bombs villages, killing and maiming children. It attempts to starve families through sanctions and blockades. Capitalism has got to go, and it will go. Our job is to hasten and harden its fall. While the necessity to create a union of African states is accepted by many, 
What is less clear is that the main tool used to sabotage this union is neocolonialism. Neocolonialism is an enemy of African people. It looks like us, but it is not us. It does not work for us and it doesn't serve our interest. Neocolonialism is a tool of its masters, capitalism and imperialism. And while we must demand that neocolonial African governments work on the people's behalf, we must never believe that they actually do. We must not be fooled into carrying water for capitalism. African women must confront the enemy. We must snatch the cloak from neocolonialism, tackle the confusion that it sows in our nations, in our political parties, and in the minds of our people, especially our youth. Women must be on the front line pressing for African unification, pressing for socialism, organizing across borders, developing socialist projects. This will weed out the fakes, imposters, and opportunists. Our nationalist history proves that the work of liberation requires all hands on deck, and when the energy of African women is unleashed, victory is decisive. So how do we now galvanize ourselves into a revolutionary force for the liberation and unification of, of Africa and its socialist construction? Here at African Liberation Day, since the embryo, that our women's wings and organizations will nurture until a liberated, unified, socialist Africa is born. It will require great sacrifice and struggle. It will be painful and we will sustain losses, but there's no other way except through the fire. So let's plan and strategize and organize properly to minimize the cost and maximize the benefits of the African revolution. Because on the other side of it lies Africa's and humanity's greatest possibility. Let's lock arms as the women did in 1960 when they met in Ghana for the Conference of the Women of Africa and African Descent. Let's lock arms as the women did in Dar es Salaam in 1962, creating the Pan-African Women's Organization. Let's lock arms, not at the level of the neocolonial borders, but as organized revolutionary Pan-Africanist women who know that we are our own solution. Let's lock arms, protect each other, educate ourselves, inspire and give loving and principled criticism for our growth and development and continue to blaze the trail of liberation that our mothers and fathers walked. All of us are in constant motion, organizing in various locales and spaces, but we will be stronger when we move together. So sisters, we will be knocking at your door. On behalf of the AAPRP and the AAWRU, our sisters, we now leave you for a short time, but with deep feelings of love, respect, comradeship, and hope. Victory is certain. Thank you. I was born by the river in a little tent. Mm -hmm. Like the river, I've been running, mm -hmm. running ever since. It's been a long, long time coming, but I know change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Mm. It's been too. Beyond the sky It's been a long A long time in coming But I know A change gonna come Oh yes it is Say, brother, help me, mm -hmm. but he.
Change. 